Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a company I've yet to have a chance to review any of their keyboards. Um, a couple months ago, I, I uh, came across Velocifier Tech um, when I was browsing Instagram and it gave me a suggestions of accounts to follow. So I picked them and I went through just real quick but I liked the pictures that they had on there and I messaged them and we communicated a couple times here and there, then exchanged emails and they just reached out to me recently and they were like, Hey, would you like to take a look at our limited edition Infinity 75? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll take a look at it. And I went real quick to the page, which has a lot of pictures. And I was instantly like after I'd already said it okay to it, arranged for them to send me a unit for review. And again, all of my reviews are honest and the companies have no editorial say. They get to watch the video at the same time that you do. I tried to communicate that as much as possible because it's important that you guys know that I'm giving you my unbiased opinion. That doesn't mean I'm always right, but I'm going to be honest to you and to myself. Anyway, um, I agreed to take a look at the keyboard because I recalled the, the few keyboards I had seen that they carried were really nice. I was like, oh, this should be interesting. But then I saw the pictures and I was like, oh, that's very interesting. Blue just so happens to be one of my favorite colors. Um, I do have a handful of blue keyboards, but I have more white and black keyboards because that's just, you know, the common color for keyboards. But this one, it has a lot of features that I like and has them laid up in a different kind of way. So I've been excited to take a look at this keyboard. And from the couple of people that I know that I talked to that have it, they're like, oh, you haven't opened it up yet? I'm like, no, I like to, you know, do it right along with you guys. I know some people will take out the keyboard and play with it for a while. That's why I do a lot of comeback to videos because all right, I have I've had time now to use the keyboard and I can, you know, share my thoughts with it. But when I first get the keyboard, I like to do, I know it's kind of like an unboxing experience, but at the same time, it's here. This is my first reaction. This is what I think of it before, you know, getting a chance to use it before, you know, getting a chance to test all the features. This was what I feel out of the box. And I think that that's, I don't know. I think that adds to the, it helps people to kind of get an impression for what they may or may not like or what to expect if they do buy this keyboard as, you know, it's trying to translate that experience as much as possible so that, you know, while I do share my opinion, I do share facts in the, uh, just, just the specs section. Um, but I want to provide as much as possible so that if you wanted to buy this keyboard, you're going to kind of get an impression of what you're going to get and kind of how you would look at it, you know, through my eyes. But I hope to, you know, stay as neutral as possible so that I can give viewers a good perception of what it's going to be like to actually get this keyboard, open it up and use it. So today we're taking a look at the Infi 75. Again, uh, it's de designed by Infiverse. Infiver in I want to say Infiniverse, but it's not Infiniverse. In Infiverse? Infiverse? In Infiverse. Infiverse? Infiverse. All right. Um, probably playing on the whole multiverse thing, but hey, if it works, it works, right? I'm not sure if this is Velocifier Tech's own and they have the studio or if this is a company that they're working with. Um, I'll try to find out a little bit more, but we have a Windows Mac switch, um, we use USB-C, uh, and it comes out of Dongguan, Guangdong province. It's not, um, no, oh, usually it's Shenzhen. So, hmm, interesting. But this is the keep out edition. Uh, that's what they're calling the colorway and just the whole design of it. And I like it. Keep out. I mean, I, I was that snotty little 12 year old that had the keep out sign that I bought at the hardware store, you know, pinned to my door. 
<laughs> I didn't want anyone in there. So let's uh, go ahead and open up this keyboard and get to the fun stuff. Now, before we before we talk about the keyboard, I like to see what's in the box as far as accessories goes. And I do want to say that this was well packed. Um, the keyboard as well. Just nice and tight in there. And this is one of the more rigid boxes. I've dealt with a lot of boxes that are much thinner and are likely to bend. So, First off, we have a very nice, it looks, it looks like it's the same blue as the keyboard, USB-A to USB-C cable uh, with a little uh, tie right on there. And it's a 2.0, USB 2.0 cable, but it's nice that we have a cable that matches the color of the keyboard. We have your standard wire switch and keycap puller. Aha, uh -huh. we have some extra keys. Well, let's check out what keys we've got here. All right, so it does look like we have a cherry profile. We have fully double shot uh, key camps. And if I'm not mistaken, they are PBT, if I recall. And we have some extra keys, colored arrows, some extra enter backspace modifiers. So it's just a little hodgepodge of different keys to change the colors. Some of these, like the one and two, maybe because they have... Um, novelties on there which i like when they do that i'm always like okay if you're gonna include novelties great but can you please include the actual key just in case i don't want to use a novelty for that one so looks like they've done it um let's go ahead and measure these and see what kind of thickness we're dealing with here let's see if i can get one reading out of this caliper set i have a nicer caliper set i should really pull that out all right it is 1.5, 1 1.5 millimeter thickness for these double shot PBT keycaps. That is pretty good. So we are off to the races in a good way. Already, I am impressed by these extra keycaps. I'm going to just set them off to the side. And I wanted to also show you guys that the keyboard does come with a dust cover that is nice and form fitting. And I really appreciate when companies include this. Helps to keep your keyboard nice and clean. And here we are with the Infi 75. And I, I gotta say, this is uh, this is pretty neat. Now, yes, I usually do prefer four keys on the com when I'm doing a 75%. But I love the placement of the screen. Honestly, I think that's that's cool. I haven't seen this design in any other keyboard. And that's pretty cool. They have the uh, sticker. I'm not going to take that off until I cut myself a piece of... Um, I'm not going to take this off until I cut myself a custom-sized piece of um, smartphone screen protector so that I don't damage that screen. And we have a screen under there as well. Is it a double screen? I don't know. We do have a clickable wheel. It doesn't stick out that far above the... Um, the surface but it does have some nice little ridges along the entire perimeter so it makes it actually quite easy to turn so it's not an issue that it's not taller actually it adds to the sleekness of it so instantly we see that we have i do want to say that's japanese but i could be wrong because i'm not the best with um asiatic languages and of course there's the uh there's keys and Yeah, that sounds nice, but we'll get to that in a minute. I am loving the construction, uh, that basically like floating top case design in the middle. Um, I don't think that lights up, but it's got this nice just um, groove going through the entire middle, between the middle and the top. So looking around the case actually found a really cool thing i don't think i've ever seen this on a keyboard it's basically like a rubber stopper i guess you gotta break it in it's nice and attached on one end of the keyboard but it lapses in it's like a rubber piece and hiding in here is the 2.4 gigahertz receiver and it says Infiniverse, so, or Infiniverse. I, 
I don't want to, want to keep saying Infiniverse. There's no extra. It's Infiverse. Um, and it's in a blue that actually matches the blue, the deep blue shade of the keyboard, which is pretty cool, I've got to say. As far as, far as design elements, I think that's pretty nifty. Um, it would have been cool if it had an eject button, but I still find the fact that it has a little... What seems like what seems like a waterproof gasket. I mean, obviously you're not gonna want to use this in water, but the lines on this, the aluminum extrusion mixed with the plastic, which I would guess is probably ABS, but I'll see if they uh, list that. I don't know if there's a light or a screen on there as well. I don't think so, but it does have that protective film, which I'm just gonna leave on for right now, but. I gotta say, this is, uh, as far as cool designs go, this one is definitely hitting a lot of points for me. It's, um, it speaks my language, and I don't know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I like this keyboard. It's, uh, pretty cool. Let's, uh, plug it in and see what the lights look like. You know, I went through the box and I went through the video just to double check, but I um, I did not see a user manual, so I don't know how to control this user. So I looked through the box. I actually replayed the part of the video where I open it and I don't see a manual anywhere. So I'm kind of stuck with trying to figure out um, I'm going to go download the software and see if that gives me some help here in a minute. But I just, um, cause it says at what's what the contents are of the box and it says one product manual and I just didn't seem to have it. I mean, I double checked and I checked where I put my manuals, but even in the video, I don't see one when I open up the box, but I did figure out that the brackets at least change the light effects. Oh, that looks to turn them on and off. Oh, that seems to be the brightness and the speed. But I like it on the blue. Um, yeah, so I'll have to figure out um, where there's a copy. I'll have to figure out where there's a copy of the electronic manual so that not only I can have it, but I'll share a link just in case anybody else is in my situation. Now, I am curious as to see the um, the software for the screen, uh, though I saw a screenshot of it and it looks to be very similar to the one that Kido's, Kido started using first and then a couple other um, brands have used the same, well, what looks like the same uh, software, so it should be pretty good. Um, shouldn't be like the standalone executables that'll just crash or take forever to actually upload something. But I'm going to have to try to find uh, some portrait style um, animations as all the ones I have right now are actually landscape. But <clears throat> I just want to say that, I mean, the between the design and everything else. Oh, oh, I didn't even notice that light there. Uh, yeah, it's it, it gives me a lot of cyberpunk futuristic oh, you are plugged in oh, oh well nancy i guess i can turn it into the wireless mode all right let's see that i have windows well all the lights are on right now i've got 40 percent and it's got the date wrong and the time wrong but i'm pretty sure that will either give me an option on the side of the software or we'll update automatically once I connect it up to the software. So I've got to say though, this is a, it's a very neat keyboard and 
I mean, just as it is. As it sounds out of the box, I'm ready to go with it. So um, I am going to go ahead and it'll just be a second for you, but it'll be a little while for me as I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my Windows machine and see what the software has and see if I can um, at least, if not find the electronic manual, at least find the basic controls for the screen. But we'll see. So I will be back in a minute. And we'll be taking a look at the software for the Infinity 75. And then I'll give my closing thoughts and we'll get to the sound test, which I think is going to sound very nice. Very nice indeed. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Infiverse Infinity 75 Keypad Edition. It is a 78 key, three mode, 75% with a knob and customizable TFT screen. It has 1000 Hertz pulling rate over 2.4 and I would assume USB as well and 125 Hertz pulling rate over Bluetooth 5.0. It is a plastic body, though it includes an aluminum weight as well as aluminum accents, which makes this keyboard stand out. It also includes extra keycaps for novelties. It is preloaded with a plate mounted stabilizers, but does appear to be compatible with PCB mounted stabilizers. It is a gasket mounted PC plate, comes preloaded with King G designer prelude linear switches and double shot PBT keycaps in the keep out edition that are 1.5 millimeters in thickness. It does have an IXPE and a PET layer on top of the PCB, as well as well dampened. It also includes a pocket for the USB 2.4 GHz dongle. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters from the typing surface, and the back sits at 39 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 8 degrees. The battery on this keyboard is 3,750 milliamp hours, and the keyboard weighs in at 1,096 grams. This keyboard MSRPs for $109 from Velocifier Tech, though it currently has a $10 off coupon, making the total price for this keyboard $99. So I did go ahead and put a screen protector on here, but I didn't quite cut it good enough to make up for those beveled corners. I'm gonna have to have my wife uh, cut it. She can cut things perfectly. I am a little bit of a brute when it comes to these things. But I gotta say, um, I've actually been daily driving this keyboard for a couple of days now. Um, things just keep coming up and I haven't had a chance to finish the video. So I keep just moving it over to my desk. And I gotta say, I thought I was going to replace the novelty keycaps and I didn't because I mean muscle memory so I know what they are and I kind of I just like them I, I like that it's that it's different and it's kind of off um, I did think that the knob had a lighter screen I mean there is a bit of a light behind it but it's really not that much um, I think it's going to take a little bit of effort to get into it so I'm not opening it up today I am I'm unfamiliar with the switches uh, that this keyboard has as I've never come across the King G I believe that's how it's pronounced King Z and these ha are branded as designer and they're definitely pre lubed as you can actually see some of the lube they might have been a little over lubed and there is hardly any ping there is a tiny amount of ping but to me it sounds like leaf spring ping and um, I have a video on that, and I'll link down below on how to fix that if that bothers you. But because we are dealing with a PC gasket-mounted plate, there's not going to be any reverberation. So I don't think you'll notice it or hear it um, when, when using the keyboard. I haven't noticed it at all. Um, if I had and I wanted to continue using it, I probably would have just stopped and gone ahead and lubed the uh, back of the leaf spring. But it has not been 
an issue for me. Now I did, uh, I did want to take it apart, but I do believe it's going to take a little bit of effort because I want to see if the stabilizers, I mean, if this PCB actually allows for PCB stabilizers, because it does appear to have the holes here and here, at least for the backspace. So it's a matter of if there's holes everywhere for screw and stabilizers and if there's clearance enough on the plate, which there might be, but it's hard to tell. I mean, because I can actually see the hole from here. And usually if you can see the hole, that means that there's enough clearance on the plate usually, but not always. It's not like a rule of thumb. Uh, though the plate mounted stabilizers are fine. They are well lubed, almost over lubed, but not quite. The, the um, tolerances are very good once locked into place. They have barely any wiggle whatsoever. I mean, it's literally, it almost feels like it's one with the plate. So that's a quite good job with those. Um, and they appear to be the newer ones, the palm style ones. So they actually sound, in my opinion, quite good. The space bar almost sounds like it's a ghost bar. And I'm, I'm just surprised at how well it sounds. Now, yes, I know that there's some aluminum keyboards in this price range and lower. Um, not too many pre-built, but there are. This one just... I've been doing this for a little while now. And don't get me wrong. I've reviewed some very interesting keyboards. And I've got a handful of them that really have a place in my heart. And it's usually the ones that, while they may still use the same features as others, they have a little bit of je ne sais quoi. They, they have some touches to their design that make them stand out from the rest. Now, at first, I wasn't sure I was going to like this knob, but I was, for some reason, I thought there was either going to be a screen because it was protected, or actually, it looks like it still might have a protective layer on there. I'm just going to end up pulling something off. I thought there was either a light or something that would come through, but I that I have found there's nothing yet. But despite it being so low that I thought I was going to have problems being able to move it, I've actually found myself just because it's got it's got knurls all along the perimeter, so it's quite easy to just turn. You don't have to grab it and turn it. You can just run your finger up and down, and it takes care of it. Now. If you do function and you press on it, then it's going to change. It's going to change over from controlling your volume and your mute to being able to control uh, the effects on the keyboard. Just go to the main screen where it has the time. Um, it also gives you. Oh, and you can go to the animation as well. Um, it, you can change the effects. The color. You can just pick a color. Let's go with blue. You can control the brightness, the speed of the effect, language, and go back to volume and just control it here, although that doesn't highlight. And it actually doesn't seem oh it is it is affecting the volume. This just isn't updating. I'm sure that'll probably be taken care of in a firmware update once they realize what's going on. But for the most part, I like to just Keep it on the animation and use it as a volume control. Um, but it, the aluminum accents around the screen, um, the knob itself, especially the back. I gotta say, I love this light. I love the. Um, it, all I can think of is retro futuristic. It's kind of like I want to say Buck Rogers, kind of the future that was kind of foreseen in the late 70s, early 80s has that design, but it still looks modern at the same time. I don't know if I'm making myself, explaining myself well, but this is an, al an aluminum weight all through here. That's plastic in here, but I don't know if that's a, a single piece down below and it just has a plastic piece above. So like I said, I think this one's going to take some, you know, just take a little bit more patience and everything. And it does have a uh, QA sticker or I want to say it's a QA sticker. It could be a warranty sticker above one of the screws. 
So it's probably one of those keyboards that, you know, they don't necessarily want you to get into, but I could see why the way that it's designed, but it's me. So I'm going to open it up at some point here in the future. Though I don't think it really needs that, that much mods because I think it sounds great. I'll probably come back and try some tactile switches and I may do a Tempest tape mod um, and see how that does. Maybe some different keycaps, but I don't think it really will need that much modding because it does sound and it feels really good. Like it's it's got bounce flex, but it's not crazy amount of flex. It's just right how I like it. So that's why it's it's um just been on my uh, been on my desk and been my primary keyboard. So I do my best to steer clear from other reviews. Just kind of you know get the you know because I'm gonna obviously have some preconceived notions, but I just stick to the product page to what the manufacturer has to say. Um, I'll watch other reviews once I've made my review, uh, but I did catch a couple of clips of like I said, I think it was Keeb Dude Dude. Um, he's one of the few people that I have listed on my channel as other channels. Um, he's a growing uh, YouTuber and he's part of the community over at Budget Keebs. So, um, but he was, he really seemed to like it. And, um, but I only like got like the intro of it. So I didn't watch the whole thing. But I got to say, being the design language, a combination of the design language, the quality of everything involved, the switches, I mean, like I said, they're linear and they're long pull. With the switches, there's a there's a tad amount of spring leaf ping, but that's not a big deal in my opinion. Like I said, I haven't really been able to notice it unless I take the switch out, like actuate it right next to my ear on the keyboard itself. Because it's a PC plate, there's no reverberation, so I don't hear it and I don't notice it. Um, I like the portrait style screen. It actually has some really nice... I went through the software, and the software is one of the standard ones that we'll see with a lot of the, um, the keyboards with screens that aren't via. Um, it does have a momentary layer, and it does have a tap layer, um, and does have the ability to upload... Um, images, uh, animations, and just got to make sure the resolution is not too high. I mean, it will adjust, but I uploaded a few animations that were pretty high, res I mean, high quality, even though I shrunk them down, but they were, you know, like a megabyte in size for a small GIF. Um, and it actually comes through quite well, in my opinion. It's the detail on it is one of the better screens I've seen with the, you know, last year we've seen a lot of keyboards with screens. And don't get me wrong, I like them and they're pretty cool. But having first experienced screens with just, you know, the, the, the two-tone, the monochrome, uh, single color screens, to go from that to actually, you know, what actually look like high definition, obviously they're smaller, so I'm, I'm positive they're not high definition. Um, but it just, they look so good. The colors are vivid and the animations are pretty clear. I should have uploaded another one, this one. A very slow animation but i still like it it's a keyboard like i said that i've never heard of before but um kind of hoping that there's other keyboards because i like this one as far as the 75 percent goes like i said there's only a few that have stood out to me because a lot of them tend to follow the same sort of layout um whether they'll have two, three, four keys, or three keys and a blocker. Um, they may have a blocker here. They may not. It may be compressed. It may be expanded. Um, it has a knob up in the corner. It's been, you know, somewhat similar body styles and you know, basic wedge. Uh, the, the pocket on the bottom instead of an actual little rubber door, which, I mean, I know this is kind of silly, but... I like it. I like this design. I like the fact that it's a um, you know, something that's not going to fall out easy, and that it has a, you know, it's a, just a different latching system. It's a rubber door to hold the um, USB C receiver. So it's like, hey, this is pretty cool. So it's all these little touches, the way the switches are made, the aluminum accents on both the screen and the back, um, the keycap set, the fact that it's 1.5 millimeter, which is, is rare to find on pre-built keyboards. Heck, it's rare to find on even some of the better keycap sets or, I mean, like KPR, I think is 1.5. Um, but I've 
you know, purchase a lot of keycap sets in the $30, $40 range that are like 1.2, 1.3 millimeters. So these are double shot. They're nice quality. I like the fact that they do include the keys for just a normal, um, you know, if you want this one, two, uh, QW, if you want the regular keys and even down to the modifiers, you've got them. And like I said, I thought I would switch them out once I started, you know, using the keyboard as my daily and I didn't. I just, <laughs> usually I switch them out. Usually I keep like one novelty, maybe two, but these I've just kind of like, I am a bit of a sucker for blues and grays. Uh, so that kind of helps me. And that's the, on a, as far as I know, this is the only colorway that it comes in so far. And it's called the Keep Out Edition, which you can see right there. And if you were a kid, you know, in the last 30, 40 years, either you or your sibling had a keep out sign on their door. Um, I know I did. I actually got a keep out sign at a hardware store and taped it, double tape, double sided taped it to my door. And actually at one point I kept the, when I wasn't there, but I, I installed a padlock uh, or the actual clips to put a padlock on on my door because I meant keep out I didn't want anyone in my room when I wasn't there um though not to go off into the weeds I did one time catch my mom getting into my room through my window and she tried to act about it but that's neither here nor there anyway so I guess the keep out kind of the vibe the it has like I said it gives me I was a big fan of sci-fi growing up. Doctor Who, I had a black and white portable TV that I would stay up at nights and watch it on PBS. And I, I loved Doctor Who. So, and Buck Rogers and Battlestar Galactica. And, I mean, anything that was sci-fi was my jam as a kid. And this kind of gives me that feel. I don't, eh, the Last Starfighter, that's one movie. It, it, I don't know why. It just reminds me of that style, but at the same time, it doesn't feel aged. It doesn't feel like, oh, that was something that, this is something that was made in the 80s or 90s. No. It feels modern. Um, so, I'm... If those things are important, those aesthetics, because, I, I mean, I mean, we've seen, we've all seen the USB cables, you know, 70, 80, hundred dollars sometimes for some really nice, don't get me wrong, they're nice. And I know that they're handmade, there's time put into it, but I mean, personally, that's just a little much for me. And I'm not the biggest fan of, of, um, the, uh, what are they called? The aircraft connectors or the, the split ones that have, I mean, I like the curls. I like when they have the uh, coils in them because it does remind me of the old IBM 5150 keyboards. But the aviator connectors just was never a big fan. Why well, put a weight in the middle of it? We're not going to be in a plane typing. We don't need to worry about it coming out. So I don't know. That's just me. But with this, the aesthetics I really like. So I can't really say, oh, you know, because it's, you know, a little pricier than maybe a couple of aluminum kits. To me, this has, it sounds very similar to say, and of course I don't have it right here handy when I thought I did. So this is the Leo Bog 75 pre-built. You can get it for around the same price, around $99. Now, don't get me wrong. These are not, you know, similar keyboards except for, you know, maybe layout. And it, the layout is still a little bit different because this is compressed and this is expanded. But this keyboard sounds extremely similar than the Leo Bog 75. Um, honestly, I think if I just replace the switches, that would be enough for it to sound close enough to this. And like I said, I will come back to this one and do... Uh, different switches and keycaps and open it up and everything because I am interested to see how it's constructed and hopefully not break anything in the process. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I just want the best value aluminum or, you know, plastic 75%, you know, that looks like the rest. Well, I'd probably say, go ahead and get this one. But if you want something unique, because I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, 
The Leo Bog is nice, and I still enjoy that keyboard. This one is a standout. It is different. Uh, where the Leo Bog does have a different knob on it. Most people don't seem to like the knob. I really don't care about it having a clear, you know, see-through. I don't like that I can't just replace it with any other knob, but it's not as big of a deal to me. So that, for somebody, that aesthetic might be like, well, I don't like that aesthetic. Well, then you've got this choice. But it is not aluminum, but it does have a screen. So there's always trade-offs depending on what you'd like and what you'd like to use. So while, you know, I can't start for me to say, oh, plastic keyboard is, you know, more expensive than aluminum. Nowadays, we're getting so close in feature sets or actually finding, you know, plastic keyboards that are actually better than some of the aluminum. And I'm not saying that it's better, though this is three mode. This one's wired and they're the same price. So if wireless is important to you then there's this one now leo bog has the high eight but there doesn't there hasn't been any stock in a while now and every time i reach out to leo bog they're like production's taking a while so it's been a couple of months now that there hasn't been any high eights in stock so maybe we're getting a refresh who knows maybe we'll get stock eventually but the leo bog high eight preloaded is going to be more than the 119 to 129 dollar range where this one's 99 so there's a, a lot of things to take into consideration i personally i like this i have been using it i can't say if i've been using it more or less than i did the leo bog 75 leo bog is in my rotation though i haven't used it in a couple of weeks probably this one has remained in as my daily for longer than most because there are just some keyboards like i said because i review so many of them all of the especially when they're similar you know, like this i mean don't get me wrong it's got this magnetic badge yeah that's okay it sounds really nice stock but i mean it has the same layout as a nj80 uh, becker ik75 a there's so many keyboards that you know i mean even the gmmk pro a lot of keyboards that follow this standard layout they just kind of stick with the same kind of wedge design and this the similar layout whereas this one is a little bit different it's more compact um we have the screen we have the low profile knob and we have ixpe and pet layers which is what helps make the leo bog and other aluminum keyboards sound really good so there's a lot of different things to consider, but I think for some people, this will be a keyboard they will enjoy more. So it's only a kilogram, so around two pounds, a little bit more maybe. Um, but this one, it comes, it's 1.6 kilos, if I'm not mistaken. So it's definitely, you know, that's going to come in a little bit heavier. And if you're using it for portability, obviously this one's going to be better. Now it doesn't have um, adjustable feet which honestly eight degrees for me works although the chin is a little bit higher than i would have liked um my wrist rest kind of comes up and it's kind of i would say probably four maybe five millimeters shy though the way i have it is on a desk drawer and i have a taller wrist rest so and i can adjust my entire drawer angle so it doesn't really affect it but if i were to use it like this i'd probably want to find me a bit of a taller um wrist rest though i did wish that it was a little bit shorter on the chin anyway uh those are my thoughts on this i like i said i i i was kind of like oh, okay i'll probably like it but once i took it out once i started using it once i started realizing you know the differences of it I really enjoyed it. Now, there is one caveat, though it's not an issue, really. Um, if you've used Linux for a while, and this is really just for Linux users, if you don't use Linux, you don't have to worry about this. But um, with Keychron keyboards, when they first started coming out and people started using them, um, especially with like the K and the C series, when like there was some official QMK via 
and some non-official QMK via whenever you'd put it into Windows mode, uh, the function keys just wouldn't work. Um, you could press function and the function key and it would do the Mac equivalent. So it was kind of like halfway in, halfway out of Mac mode. Um, this keyboard has the same thing. Now, it's a very simple fix. I mean, granted, I don't have any idea about the, the firmware um, for this keyboard, but I know that other keyboards that use the same driver software um, don't have this issue. So I'm sure they're just a line that they missed either to comment or comment out. Um, but there is a fix. Uh, you can either load up the HID underscore Apple module in your MKI init, MK init CPIO, and just rebuild it. Or you can do, um, you can add a command to your kernel parameters. And I'll put both of them, I'll link them down below as to how to fix that. So in case you do have a Linux machine, this will work with it and the function keys do work. Cause at first I was like, why are the function keys not working? Cause I actually, I was actually going into a terminal control alt F2 and I was like, nothing's happening. And I was like, I thought there was something wrong with my computer at first, but realized that the function keys weren't working, but it took one command that I could do without rebooting to tell me what I needed to do in order to fix it. And once I rebooted, like I said, I just added it to um, as a kernel parameter. So now every time it boots up, it works just fine with the function keys. So like I said, I'll put that down below in uh, the uh, description of the video. So in case you come across you have a Linux machine and happen to come across this, you'll have a quick fix to it. But otherwise, I got to say, I'm enjoying using this keyboard. And as soon as I'm done with this review, it's going back on my desk until, well, I've got a couple of really cool ones coming up and um, I've been preparing for them um, while dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. I got a kid going into college. I've got weather situations. I got a whole bunch of stuff. So, but I don't want to announce anything or spoil anything before I get to it. But I got some really cool, different kind of keyboards that I'm going to be uh, reviewing and building here in the near future. So, like I said, this one, it was unexpected. I I was kind of just like, okay, it's another 75%. Eh, I'm sure I'll like the colors. I like it. But it ended up surprising me and winning a place in my heart and a place in in my, I guess, uh, I don't want to call it a harem, <laughs> but in my collection, I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy a lot of keyboards. It's hard for me to go, ick. I mean, I usually can find something that I don't dislike about a keyboard. I'm just, I'm just like that. I'm a geek about them. I, I don't know what happened. Um, somebody must have hit me over the head with an old 5150 and just knocked a keyboard into my senses. But there are a few times that a keyboard will speak to me. That earns a place in my, I don't want to say top 10 or top 25 because it's a changing number in it you know it's just a in my top pole position uh keyboards or keyboards that i think of more readily because of the looks the experience the, the whole package um so i've enjoyed using this keyboard i haven't i have been using it without a numpad because i've got the um the knob but i haven't been doing a lot of stuff that requires a lot of number entry as far as coding lately so it hasn't been an issue um and it's just been an enjoyable keyboard to use anyway as always if you guys got any questions any comments about this keyboard anything that you'd like for me to do when i do come back to it anything you'd like for me to change maybe try these switches or those key caps let me know down in the comments below i'd love to know what you think about this keyboard as well your opinion matters to me. But for right now, I'll go ahead and leave you with a stock sound test of the Infi 75 from Infiverse that was sent out to me by Velocifier Tech. Links down in the description. I do hope that you guys enjoyed the review. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>